Welcome back, readers. I'm so happy to see so many of you joining us again, and so happy to welcome our new friends. Just a reminder about how much your teachers miss you and how happy we are to see you here. And we're so proud of you for continuing to work hard on your reading and writing and math at home. My name is Miss Brandt, and I'm a kindergarten teacher at Rising Star Elementary School. Go Firebirds! I'm so happy to be here with you today for our third Making Meaning lesson of this week. Who remembers? What skill have we been focusing on this week? You can shout it out. You got it. We've been practicing visualizing. Let's say it together. Visualizing. Remember, when we visualize, we're making a mental picture in our mind. Our brains are creating a picture or even a movie of the words that we're hearing read aloud or that we're reading on the page. So right now, for those of you who are joining me again today, I want you to visualize my friends that you've seen before. Remember, their names are Tiggy the Tiger and Saki the Sock. Go ahead and visualize for a moment. What do you see? All right, now I'll show you. Tiggy the Tiger is going to say hi. Some of you might have visualized his stripes and his nice white paws. You got it. And then. This one's shy, so we have to be really quiet. Socky the sock, can you say hi? Hi. Wow, some of you might have visualized Socky's big eyes and purple color. You might have even visualized how soft he might feel. Great work. Remember, good readers can practice visualizing all the time, even if you're not reading a book. Today, I want to share with you another of my favorite books. Some of you might have heard a little bit of this story earlier this week, but good readers always reread, and we love to read books more than once. So I'm going to read for you Lola Plants a Garden. As I'm reading, we're going to stop to visualize together this time. What do we see? What pictures do we have in our mind of Lola as she plants her garden? All right, readers, for this lesson, you don't need anything, just your brains ready to imagine and visualize. So sit up straight, get ready to read, and here we go. Lola Plants a Garden. This book is by Anna McQuinn, and it's illustrated by Rosalind Beardshaw. All right, when I hear those words, Lola Plants a Garden, I can already start visualizing, even before I'm reading. And if you want, you can even close your eyes and visualize with me. I'm visualizing a garden. I'm outside at our school. At Rising Star, we have a big grassy space for kids to play on. And I'm visualizing a girl standing in the grass, smiling. She's excited and happy to plant a garden. What do you think? What do you visualize? Maybe it smells like grass. Maybe you feel the sun on your body and how warm it is. I'm visualizing Lola out there on that grass, excited to plant a garden. You can go like this if you agree with me. And remember, it's okay if your mental picture or your visualization is different than mine. Let's read together to find out what happens in this story. Lola plants a garden. This page has a short poem on it. Let me read it. Mary, Mary, quite contrary, how does your garden grow? With silver bells and cockle shells and pretty maids all in a row. I'm noticing some of you going like this. You might have heard this poem before. Huh, I wonder what this poem has to do with Lola planting a garden. Let's find out. Lola plants a garden. Lola loves her book of garden poems. Her favorite poem is the one about Mary Mary. Wow, I see some of you making a connection sign. You're right. We just heard the poem about Mary Mary. That's one of Lola's favorite poems. Wow, these words and this picture are really helping me to visualize Lola sitting with her mom or whoever this is reading a poem. I can visualize what the book looks like how it might feel as Lola's turning the pages. Can you see that too? Yeah, let's keep reading. Lola wants to plant a garden. What does Lola want to do? 
You can shout it out. Let's make sure we understand what we're reading. You got it. Tiggy said it too. Lola wants to plant a garden. Mommy says there is room near the vegetables. Mmm. I'm having a text-to-text -text connection because I'm remembering the book we read earlier this week. Do you remember Gregory the Terrible Eater? He loved to eat vegetables. You got it. Lola gets books about gardens from the library. She chooses her favorite flowers from the book. Mommy makes a list. Ooh, when I hear the words, mommy makes a list, if I close my eyes, I can visualize a piece of paper with many things on it. Remember, a list is lots of words written out. Maybe it's a shopping list, what you might need from the grocery store. But this list is mommy writing down Lola's favorite flowers. Can you visualize that list too? Give me a thumbs up if you see that list in your head. Wow, readers, I see so many thumbs up. Great visualizing. They go to the garden store to buy seeds. A garden store is a store that sells things like seeds or soil or tools you might need to plant a garden. Ooh, I can visualize the list in mommy's hands, this picture is helping me do that too. Look here, mommy is holding the list. I can visualize Lola smiling when she gets her seeds. The picture helps me do that too. Lola and mommy make the garden. The seed packets mark where the flowers are planted. Ooh, I'm noticing some of you going like this. Maybe you have planted a garden too. I know at our school, we have our very own vegetable garden right there at Rising Star. Go like this if your school has one too. Wow, maybe you can even visualize that garden. The seed packets mark where the flowers are planted. Lola will have to wait a long time for them to grow. Mm, think about something you've had to wait a long time for. Maybe you were feeling so excited for it to come. I can visualize and I can point to my brain and even close my eyes to help me here. I can visualize Lola feeling excited and also looking like this because she's waiting for those seeds to grow. Lola makes her own flower book while she waits. Mommy types the Mary Mary poem and Lola glues it in. All right, readers, I'm gonna keep reading. And now it's your turn to practice visualizing without my help. So while I read, listen to the words I say and make a picture in your mind. You can even close your eyes sometimes if that helps. Lola makes a string of bells. She finds shells and some old beads. She even makes a little Mary Mary. One day, Lola sees tiny green shoots. Shoots are like small growth of a little plant. One day, Lola sees tiny green shoots. She pulls up weeds so that the shoots can grow. Lola's flowers grow bigger. They open up to the sun. Wow, I'm seeing so many of you pointing to your brains, remembering to visualize. Keep it up, readers. Daddy helps Lola hang her shiny bells. Lola finds Mary Mary a special spot. It's just perfect. Orla, Ben, and Ty are coming to see Lola's garden. Lola and Mommy make cupcakes. You could pretend like you're making a cupcake. Lola wears her flower shirt. Mommy helps Lola with her hair. Lola's friends love everything about her garden. They share the crunchy peas and the sweet strawberries that Mommy grew. Mmm. Then, 
Lola makes up a story about Mary Mary. What kind of garden will Lola plant next? The end. And kindergartners and first graders, look, I'm noticing another poem. Lola, Lola, extraordinary, how does your garden grow? With flower seeds and shells and beads and happy friends all in a row. Wow, I see some of you showing, you heard rhyming words, excellent. That poem changed from Mary Mary to Lola Lola. And that's the end of our book, Lola Plants a Garden. Wow, readers, give yourself a high five. Say, good job visualizing. Let's say it together. Good job visualizing. I heard and saw so many of you visualize with me and then do it all by yourselves while I finish reading Lola Plants a Garden. Now, before it's your turn all by yourself, I'm going to show you how we might write and draw, or maybe even both, about what we visualized today with Lola Plants a Garden. So, over here on our easel, I have something very special to show you. I have a journal entry page. And up here at the top, it says visualizing, because that's the skill we're working on today. Let's say it together. Visualizing, excellent. Here, it says title of book. Hmm, what book did we just read? When you're doing this on your own readers, you can even look at your book to help you spell the words correctly. You can copy the title from your book. Our book was called Lola Plants a Garden. So that's what I'll write right here on the title. Before I write the title, does anybody remember, what does my paper have to have before I get started? You can shout it out. You got it your name and the date. So up here in the corner, I'm gonna write my name, which is Miss Brandt. And I'm gonna write the date, which is March 27th, 2020. Now, the title of our book was Lola, and I'm gonna look, and I know when I write the title of a book, I start with a capital letter for every word. Lola. I'll do my two finger spaces here. Plants a garden. Wonderful. Thank you for helping me say that while I read it. Wrote it. That's the title of our book. Now, down here in this box, we're going to draw what we visualized while we were hearing this story, Lola Plants a Garden. One thing that I really visualized was Lola's flowers. Once they were planted, they started small little shoots and then they grew up nice and tall. I visualized those stems being green and then the words told me that the flowers opened up. So I visualized beautiful flowers opening up into the sunshine. I'm gonna start with the color green because that's what color I visualized the stems of the flowers being. I visualize tall, beautiful flowers, two of them, growing up, up, up to the sun. And the book didn't tell us exactly what color these flowers were, but in my mind, I visualized bright red flowers. That was the picture I made in my mind. So I'm gonna draw bright red flowers opening up to the sun. Now, as I'm drawing this, you might be thinking about, hmm, the sun. We visualize that together. It feels warm. It looks bright. I'm going to draw the sun up here in the corner of my paper because the sun helped the flowers to open up and bloom. Now, good readers draw and write about what they visualize. So some of my kindergartners out there you might just put the first letter of the pictures that you drew. It's important we label our work. So let's think, flowers. Let's hear, what letter is that? F, you got it, F for flowers. 
So I will write an F by both of these pictures. Up here we have the sun. What's that? You got it. S is for sun. Some of my first graders, you might, or even some of my kindergartners, write out the whole word. Sun, flower, flower. Remember, if you're going to do that, use your best guess spelling and try your hardest to put every letter that you hear. For now, we'll just leave it with the first letter. Now, I've written my name and the date, the title of our book, and drawn a picture of what I visualized. But it's important that I try my best to write what I drew also. Some of you might write one whole sentence, and then you might add more, even two. And some kindergartners or first graders might just write a couple of words that helped them when they were drawing their picture. I am going to write about how Lola planted these flowers. So when we write a sentence or a name, our first letter is always capital. You got it. Lola plants. Hmm. First, these flowers started as seeds. I'll say many seeds. Lola plants many seeds. And that's the end of my first sentence. What goes at the end of my sentence? You can show me if you remember. Wow, I saw so many students remember. A period goes at the end of our sentence. Show that with me. Great. Lola plants many seeds. After that, the seeds grow into beautiful flowers, like what I visualized. So that's what I will write. Remember, some of you might just write a word, some might write a sentence, and some of you might write more than one sentence. I'll make sure I have my finger space and keep writing. The seeds g -g grow into beautiful, beautiful flowers. Now, let me read this. The seeds grow into beautiful flowers. I think this needs more than a period. My voice got really excited when I said it. Shout it out, what do I need? You got it, an exclamation point. The seeds grow into beautiful flowers. Those words really helped me when I visualized these beautiful flowers. So readers, remember, now it's gonna be your turn. You have a journal entry page in your extension activity packet that looks just like this. Let's take a look and see what it looks like. Your page says title, and it will have the title of the book. It says visualizing, and it has room for you to draw or maybe draw and write about what you visualized in your independent reading book. So when we're done here, you're gonna go ahead and you'll get that from your activity extension. Don't worry if you don't have that. You can always just use a piece of paper and a pen or pencil. All right, readers, so now it's your turn. You're gonna go ahead and you're gonna find a book, a just right book, and you're gonna read it. And as you're reading it, you're gonna stop to what? You got it, visualize. After you're done reading, you can draw or write or both about what you visualized in your independent reading. I am so proud of all of your hard work this week. And I am so excited to see all of your smiling faces and looking forward to doing it again next week for our Making Meaning lessons. So give me a big air high five. Give me an air high 10. Nice. And let's say good reading. Let me hear it. Good reading. You got it. All right, remember, if you don't have a Just Right book at home, it's okay. You can always check out our student portal online. See you next week. Bye.